In this video, we're going to do some um, calculations of general solutions and we're going to do some working with general solutions. So just before we start, I want to um, remind ourselves that solutions of trig equations are actually angles. It's angles that we're finding. And we're going to use our inverse trig functions, which are inverse sine, inverse cos and inverse tan, to solve the trig equation. And they're going to give us one answer. And when we use those, we need to be careful of finding the correct angles when the values in here are negative. We need to remember that finding a solution to a trig equation that there are multiple angles that are multiple angles that have the same uh, trig ratio. So there'll be multiple solutions. And that once we have a single solution, we can use the general solution patterns to generate all possible angles from that one particular angle that we found. So let's have a look at our general solutions. So our general solution for sine has two versions. One that has a, um, an alternating counter in it, a short version, or this version here that has two parts to it. It doesn't matter which one you use, you just need to be aware that there are two varieties that are used for sign. You also need to be aware for whichever formula you're using, inverse sine of b, if your b is a positive value, then you're working in the top half of the unit circle and so your angle that you get out here will be a positive value. If your angle that if the value of sine is negative, that puts you down in the bottom half of the unit circle, and so the angle that you're working with will be a negative angle. The general for solution for cos is actually two equations written in a short form with a plus minus in the middle. So this is actually 2n pi plus inverse cos of a as well as 2n pi minus inverse cos of a. Now you need to be careful again with your inverse cos of a. If the a value is a positive value then we're working in the these two quadrants of the unit circle and so our angle that we'll be using is a positive value. It'll just be our reference angle but if our cos value is negative that means that we're working over this side of the unit circle and that the base angle that we're going to be working with is this angle here, which is pi minus theta. So it's the angle in the third quadrant. You need to remember that if you're working it out by hand. A common mistake to make is if cos is, a, if cos is negative a, to just use theta instead of pi minus theta. Watch out for that. The general solution for tan is just one formula. The one formula generates all the answers. Again, you need to be um, aware of whether C is a positive value so that you're working in the first quadrant and the third quadrant and the angle that you're substituting in will be this angle here, which will be a positive angle. And if your C value is negative, that means that you will be working in these two quadrants here and the angle you'll be substituting in will be a negative angle. So for general solutions, you still need to check which quadrants that you're going to be working in to determine what to substitute into your formula. So let's have a go at using some of these formulas. So if you have a general solution of a transformed function, something that looks like this, we work very similar to solving trig equations by rearranging so we get sine of something is equal to something straight up. So this is what we've done here. So add 2 to both sides, divide both sides by 4, which gives us a half. And then we substitute our values into the general solution. But with whatever we've got in the brackets here, instead of our x in our general solution formula. So you can see that this is the general solution formula for sine, but instead of an x at the front, I've got two with x plus pi and two, exactly what I've got up here. So then we work out uh, inverse sine of a half, which is pi and six. And now we're gonna go through the process here 
of solving for x. So we're going to divide both sides by 2 to get rid of the 2 at the front here. And so that'll give us uh, n pi on 2. For the second term here, instead of dividing by 2, I'm going to times by a half, which gets you to the same thing. It's just a bit easier to see. And if I tidy that up, that gives me n pi on 2 plus, and this becomes pi on 12. Now I simply add, whoops, to subtract pi on 2 from both sides, and this is our general solution at the end. So to find the general solution of these, we use the general solution pattern and we use our inverse function. This one will be inverse sine of minus a half. And this one will be inverse cos of a half. So inverse sine of minus a half, inverse sine of a half, is pi on 6 because it's a negative it will be negative pi on 6 and inverse cos of a half is pi on 3 so we put those values into our general formulas so for cos I've just written the formula the general solution and then replaced inverse sine of minus a half with pi on 6. And we're done. For this one here, it's a little bit more complicated because we're actually finding general solutions of this. Our general solution formula starts with x minus pi on 6 instead of just x. The rest is the same. So from here, I'm going to rewrite this as pi on 3 and then I'm going to add pi on 6 to both sides. That will give me 2n pi plus or minus pi on 3 plus pi on 6. So these two combine together, that's 2 pi on 6 to make 3 pi on 6, which you can simplify to pi on 6. So here is your general solution for the equation above. So this example, find the first two positive solutions of. This is a, a common sort of question. Um, this one here you could probably do without using the general solution and it doesn't say in here that you need to use the general solution at all. Um, I just wanted to use these two examples to show that if you are asked to use a general solution, what you do would be systematically substitute values for n into the general solution. And so for this sine function here, you write the general solution. You have uh, inverse sine of a half because it's equal to a half. Inverse sine of a half is pi on 6, so you replace it there so that you come up with your general solution for that particular equation that you've got. And then you go through the process and you systematically substitute in different values for n. So I've started at n is equal to 0 substituted that in and got one answer it's positive so that's good then i substituted in n is equal to one and so i've got another positive answer so that's the, that's good that's two um, positive solutions i could double check here to make sure i've got all the positive solutions by substituting in n is equal to minus one and see what i got there and i've done the same thing over here for cos of x is equal to minus a half so you write the general solution substituting in what it is that your equation is equal to when it's in the form of cos of something is equal to now remember inverse cos of minus a half cos of minus a half puts you in the second and third quadrants so the angle that we're going to work with is the angle here which is going to be pi minus whatever angle it is that gives us cos value of positive a half which is pi on three so when we tidy that up together what we get is our general solution for that particular equation here so this is the general solution for this equation here and then you go through the process of substituting in systematically values for n so i've started with zero here and you can see that um, i end up with zero so two times zero times pi is zero plus or minus 
2 pi on 3. So I've got 0 plus or minus 2 pi on 3. So with one n value for cos, I've actually generated two values. And I would continue doing that. But what I wanted to show you was that you can actually do this using um, your CAS calculator by simply asking it to solve the equation. And to make it work just for um, positive values of x, because you're after the first two positive values. So in any revolution around the unit circle, you're going to get two solutions for sine. So our first two solutions should be between 0 and 2 pi. And you'll notice that when I've typed this in, I come outside of the solve bracket, and then I use the given that symbol and the domain so that I just get the two answers that, I've, that I want. And I've done the same thing with the cos value, and you can see that it's automatically given me the two correct answers in the correct quadrants. So example three is again a classic kind of question. It asks you to find the sum of the solutions for this. Um, it's a little bit more difficult than simply finding the solutions because you'll come up with answers and then you need to use your fraction skills to add them together. So I, I wanted to show you this. You can do it with your CAS calculator um, and generate your two solutions. You could do it by hand and generate your two solutions. But I really wanted to show you this one here. So this command here on your CAS finds the x-intercepts. And it finds the x-intercepts for the graph of, and what I did was I took sine of x is equal to a half and I um, rearranged it so that it became sine of x is minus a half. You can see that minus a half is equal to zero. And for x-intercepts, you let your y value equal to zero. So realistically, what I've got here is the equation y is equal to sine of x minus a half. And now I'm asking my CAS calculator to, do, to find the x-intercepts for it. And you can see that it's done it here. The reason that I wanted to show you this was you can then use the sum function to get it to add all of the answers together. And you can see that it's done it there. Finding these commands can be difficult. On the bottom of your CAS calculator, you've got a, um, a keyboard with letters in it. Just type it in. Use it exactly as I've got it written here, S-U-M, and then open brackets. And here, it looks like I've typed it in, but what I actually used was the A-N-S button. Or you can go up using the up arrow on your touchpad go up and collect, collect this, and then press enter. So this example is a much wordier one, um, but all it's asking you to do is to generate solutions. So it says find the solutions, and we've got a domain that we need to find the solutions for. And here is the general solution that we're going to be working with. So basically, we're gonna take a systematic approach and sub in values for n, and so that we find solutions in the required domain. So let's start by tidying up this equation and then substituting in n values. So evaluating inverse cos of minus a half, remember cos of minus a half, that puts us in the second and third quadrants. And so sine, inverse sine of minus a half is pi minus, and the, co and the angle that gives us cos of a half is pi on 3. x is equal to 2n pi plus or minus 2 pi over 3. So now we start to substitute in values for n. And I've gone ahead and done this. So when n is equal to 0, we put a 0 for n here. And that's the only position that n is in our um, general solution. That gives us 0 plus or minus 2 pi on 3. So our answers are 2 pi on 3 and minus 2 pi on 3. And both of those values fit within our range, within our domain for x, 
which is from negative pi to pi. And so just to make sure that there's no others, I'm going to increase my n value by 1 and work out what those value, what that gives us. So 2 pi plus 2 pi on 3, so that's 6 pi on 3, plus another 2 pi gives me 8 pi on 3. This one here gives me 4 pi on 3, which is outside of our domain, because our domain we're working with is from minus pi to pi, minus pi to pi, which is in fact minus 3, 3 pi on 3 to 3 pi on 3. So these two are definitely outside of the domain. We'll check n is minus 1. Same deal, you end up with two values that are outside the domain. One more example to go. So this example use, asks you to find the general solution for the intersection of the graphs. So two graphs, so you've got y is equal to cos of 3x, which is the blue line here, and y is equal to cos of 5x, which is the red line here. And you can see that they intersect at all different sorts of points. So we've got intersecting graphs here. And so what we do is we equate the two angles. So cos of something is equal to cos of something else. And by equate, therefore, this angle must be equal to this angle here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to equate the angles with just one of them as a general solution. So it doesn't matter which one, whether you do the general solution for 3x or you do the general solution for 5x, it doesn't matter which one you do. All you need to do is to make one just as a single angle and one as the general solution. And because it's cos, I've got two actual answers here, one that has a positive and one that has a negative. And then if I go through and solve for x, I get x is equal to minus n pi. And so this is saying that for whole number multiples of pi, you will get a solution. And for the other one with negative, when you simplify it down, you get x is equal to n pi on 4. So this is saying for multiples of pi on 4, you also get solutions. So let's have a look at the solutions that we've got over on the graph here. And we've got different forms of solutions, different forms of intersecting points. So you can see that I've coloured each of the intersection points a different colour and that they are intersecting at different parts of the graph each time. None of those intersection points is the same. And we've got and we've got six different solutions. And if you ask your CAS calculator to solve it, it will spit out six different versions of a general solution which match those particular points. But if you double check the answers we got with the pictures on the graph, they actually match for all of the points. So the x-axis is scaled at pi on 4, and you can see that all of the intersection points actually sit above or below pi on 4. And that these multiples here, are these angles here, are in fact just multiples of this. So either this, which generates all of our solutions, this solution that generates all of our solutions, or you could put the CAS one down if you like, this massive thing here. Both of these are correct. There are multiple ways to describe the same general solution. You just need to choose one. In the exam, any equivalent form will be accepted as a correct answer. So just get one. So unless the question states a specific form, any equivalent form is acceptable. But don't use calculator syntax. So you'll notice here in the solution, we've got n2, n2, n3, n3, n4, n5. This is calculator syntax. If you wrote that in the exam, you would not be getting any marks for it. You cannot use calculator syntax. So this is CAS syntax and you can't use it. 
So instead, what you do is write those solutions with just the letter N and write all of those special counters as just the letter N. All you need is a counter in there. And then finally, you need to write that N is an element of Z, which I forgot to do back over here. Oh, done.